We need more vino! Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So I'm glad you're here today. We're going to do some wine bottling. You can see my wine tree in the background there and it's ready to go. All the bottles are clean. I have my corker on the floor ready to go. I have my wine corks. I have everything clean, disinfected. We're going to do something new today I have never done before and that is use a wine filter. Uh, normally my wines turn out pretty good and uh, sometimes they're more cloudy than others. Sometimes there's a little more sediment in them than others. Uh, and it usually kind of depends on how I've made that and, uh, you know, whether they've come from just a juice or I've actually made them from, uh, from the grapes and the grape skins are involved. It can depend. There's a lot, of, a lot of variables. But today, this one here is turning out a little bit cloudy, the one I have here off camera. You'll see it in a second. And um, I want to make sure this is going to be a little bit more clearer than what it is. And so I went ahead and I have seen this in years past. Uh, a wine filter called the Bueno Vino or something. It's some kind of Italian thing. Bueno, Buon Vino, Buon Vino. It always reminds me of that scene in uh, Grumpy Old Men where he's he raises a glass and says, "More Vino." Um, so anyway, uh, Buon Vino is uh, this this company. I'll show you the filter. I've never used it before. The reviews on this thing are mixed. I don't know what I'm going to get. There are some people who hate this machine. There are some people who says it works great. From my research, it seems like the people who hate it did not follow the instructions. They just hooked it up, tried to run their wine through it, and everything exploded everywhere, and then they get really upset and they leave a bad review. Whereas the people who take the time and research on how the machine actually really works have a fine time with it. It's okay, no big deal, and it works great. So. We'll see how we do. I did do a lot of research. I watched a lot of videos, review videos, and instruction videos on this machine. And so we'll see how things turn out. Mm. Scary. Okay, let me show you what I got. Let's get started. So here's the machine. It's, that's it. Basically, it's really small. Not that, not much to it. And you have different plates that go in here. And between the plates that go inside of here, uh, they stand up. And you have these little cardboard filters that stand in between the plates. And you tighten them down. And there's an input and an output, 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 is that right? <laughs> input, output. <laughs> and uh, you uh, get your wine and it's filtered and uh, it goes to the plates and hopefully everything is good. So it's not, not much to it, just a little pump, um, self-priming, and we're gonna see if this makes a difference. I, I would like to, I'm really interested in, in maybe using this a lot more for my wines if it works out well. Um, I just like, I want my wines to look as good as the amount of time I put into them. And winemaking, if you've never, if you really want to learn patience, learn winemaking because what you produce today will not be drinkable, you know, usually for at least a year or two, um, depending. But uh, if, you, if you do it right, <laughs> if you do it right. So we're going to give this a whirl. Here it is. Let me set this up. I'll show you how it's going to set up and then we'll go from there. So if everything goes right, we're going to do two runs on the filter. Uh, the first one's going to be this. It's a filter pad. I don't know if you can, there you go. Filter pad number one. It's a coarse filter. Uh, this is for just a new wine right out of the carboy. Maybe it's been racked a couple times and we'll see if this clears it up. I'm sure it will. And then we're going to do this one here, which is called a polishing filter, a polishing filtration. And the way I saw this in one of the videos was a really good example or a really good analogy of a freshly washed car. So you have a nicely washed car. It looks nice, but then you go out and you take the same car and then you wash it and then wax it. You can tell the difference when they're standing side by side. The wax car looks a lot better than just the washed car. So that's the difference. You have to uh, wash and polish and, and you can usually tell the difference between the two wines uh, when, when you do that. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to put these in first. We have to soak them and then follow all the instructions. I'm going to get this thing set up, ready to go, and then I will... Um run it and we'll see how it works.
So one of the things I think people forget when they run this machine is they don't prime it. Not only do you have to soak the pads before you begin, you must prime uh, the pump and get a, a, about a gallon or two of water through the pump first before you begin your wine. And so I have a, a couple gallons of clean water. We're gonna run that through and just get those pads nice and wet and soaked and ready and primed. And then we'll, we'll run the wine. Well, the priming went really good. I was actually really impressed. No disasters, nothing spraying out so far anywhere. So uh, now we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the wine and see what happens. Everything seems to be running very smoothly. Um, it's, it's sucking it in pretty good. There's no disasters. There's a little bit coming out of the pads on the top, and that's just a little bit, and it's trickling down into the tray, which is then going into this collection hose, and it's also going down into the carboy. Now, I took a sample right there, and it tastes pretty good. Now, I know what you're thinking. What kind of wine is this? This is my own experiment. This is a dry, uh, Concord grape wine, a dry Concord grape. I know that's not normal. Usually Concord, Concord wines are sweet, but this one's going to be more of a dry wine because I like dry wines. And so far, everything is looking good. That's going in. And the taste is really good. Clear. Clearer. I can't wait to look see the difference. I'm going to get a glass and um, compare the two at the end of the filtered and the polish. Okay, a filtered and the polish. And I'll see if I can get a glass of just that right there. We'll compare all three. Okay, so that's our first run through with the number one pads. We're going to go down to the number two pads now and see how that goes. I'll show you the difference at the end of the video, but already I can see a slight difference in that. Not a big difference, but I'm hoping that uh, the number two is really gonna make a big difference You know, when you have them side by side. I will do a side by side comparison when it's all said and done. I even have some number three filters. That's the smallest filter they make. I may run it through that since this was so easy and no hassle, I may just run it through there and see how it goes and then compare all three. Um, so stick around. So I was trying to find the best way to show you the clarity of what we have here. Uh, this is straight out of the carboy. This is what it looked like when it came out of the carboy, the far right of your screen. And then as we move forward, this is the first pad, the most coarse pad filter that they had. And this is number two, the second most uh, coarse filter that they had. And then this last one was the very fine, uh, particulate filter that they have, the finest filter that they have, um, and you can see the difference. Absolutely see the difference. Uh, any of these are fine to drink. Now, there is a definite taste difference between this and this, and then this, and this, and this, and this. This has definitely more dead yeast particles in it, uh, different what they call proteins uh, that exist within the wine before it's filtered, and there's a smell difference. You can definitely smell the difference as you go up the levels. And there's a stark difference between taste and smell and obviously clarity from here to here. So um, you take a sip of this, it's not bad. It'll be okay, you could bottle that and it would be fine to drink, you know. It's fine to drink now. It's a little bitter because if it's just a new wine, it's got a little bit of acidity to it and it would mellow out over a couple years for sure. But man, there's a really good difference here. And that is going to be really uh, just pretty to drink when you pour it out of the wine bottle in a couple years from now. Uh, and that tartness it has mellowed in the bottle and it's just aged uh, very well. And it's going to look really good, that's all. So um, let me see if I can show you what it looks like up top. Definite difference. This one is just right out of the carboy. It's been racked a few times. Uh, there's a small filter that I use when I rack uh, just to get any large particulates out. Uh, but you can see the definite difference when it comes to this one versus that one over there. This one is going to also be good to drink, but it's going to look a lot better, look a lot more professional. Um, 
you can bring this out for like a dinner or something and the guests will be wowed by it. Oh, so there you go. Definite difference in the Buen, Buen, Buen Vino. I guess that's good wine in Italian. I'm not sure exactly how you say that, but uh, that is, there it is right there. And like other people have had, they've had success. Some people have had extreme failures. I think there's a difference between reading the directions. I think if you set it up right, if you prime it correctly, the machine will work as instructed. And at the last one, the final stage, there was a little bit of splatter because the filter is so fine um, that it can be clogged up quicker if you don't uh, do it right. Or if you, you know, if you put in something large with large particulate, it may clog up easier, but it still worked out fantastic. And I will definitely be using it again and buying some more filters so that I can reuse this machine. So there's your difference. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Rest assured, the cloudy wine will not go to waste. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get that's gonna get drank tonight or right now actually. Uh, the rest of the bottles, uh, they're all bottled, it's all done. I got them in storage, and so that's gonna sit there for about two years. And after about two years, uh, the flavor will have mellowed, the tartness will have mellowed, and it'll be really good out of the bottle. So I'm really looking forward to trying this in two years. But just goes to show. Stupid shit hurt. I mean, if you're gonna try something, a machine that you spend, I mean, the thing is, well, I think I spent a hundred dollars, one hundred and twenty dollars on that on that filter. Read the directions. I mean, it worked fine for me. I don't know. Maybe maybe all these people are getting bad um, bad machines, but uh, it seems to me, and and others who have commented online that people just aren't reading the directions. And if you prime it right, it'll work fine. Stupid shit hurt. And it just doesn't happen enough these days. Hey, link in the description below if you like the t-shirt from teespring.com. Every purchase you make of the t-shirt helps the channel. So, all right, guys, don't leave before you hit that like button. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, see you next time on an American Homestead. Cheers. Hey, guys, I'm happy to introduce an American Homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. I'll wait.